I have backdoor access to most of the security cameras and the New York mosques. It has taken me years. Buddy, it doesn't it's not going to take you years. It's never it's never going to happen. Cuz first off, what backdoor? <laughs> I worked in security. Uh right well, actually right when I moved here, I worked in security. All of the security cameras were wired. They they didn't go out to anything. It was just it was a closed CCTV closed circuit television it, it there's no there's no back door to it unless you run a gigantic fucking cable into the box under my desk um i'm just gonna read this uh, okay the sexy blonde the sexy blonde with the short skirt seemed turned on at that point breathily she asked and what will justice look like so he threw in a line just for good measure Justice will be done when people like you live in the mud you've made for us. Only then can we lift each other up. Her eyelashes fluttered. That shit was magic, Levon knew. He learned it at the university, too. White coeds majoring in journalism were a cinch. Where are the white women at? Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, so now we have some bullshit. Uh, fuck. I've just got to skip through this because I'm doing the play-by-plays are too much. We go to Tehran. Um, this is where you meet Muhammad. He is a terrorist. Uh, he's... Whole <laughs> Come on! You didn't know? This is Muhammad. Muhammad's a terrorist. He is one of the people that's holding on to... Uh, whatever. I see you are worried. Do not fear... Does not the Quran say those who have said, O oh Lord is Allah, and then remain on a right course, the angels will descend upon them, saying, Do not fear and do not grieve, but receive good tidings of paradise. Um, yeah, we, we, we just do some little back and forth religious leader. Of, obviously, if there's a fucking a Muslim religious leader, they are directly tied to terrorism um, and also to the White House, as we find out later. Let's see. I can just skip down through this. Who the fuck? Okay. Yeah, they're they're setting up a thing. This is I can't remember if they talk about it, but basically there's a nuke. <laughs> of course. Um Tehran again, but this is Brett. The the time the time date is not always up there, the dateline. Welcome General Hawthorne. So they tell uh this to the fucking general, right? Brett, they got caught. He's gonna go and do a fucking we're gonna behead you eventually, but we're gonna do like one like little thing first. And if you do it wrong, we're gonna cut your balls off. This is, by the way, in like 2010 or some shit. And they just he just does like, hey, this is my location and he does a fucking like do an airstrike right here because i'm here right now and then he gets butt hurt when the president doesn't authorize an airstrike into tehran <laughs> they're in tehran iran which is not at war in 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 the shapiro verse um america and tehran are not at war and the the guy thinks that the president of the united states is just going to allow for an airstrike based on blinking of a guy that's held in a terrorist cell or in a terrorist camp to just randomly bomb a, a fucking like a grid coordinate in Tehran. <laughs> He's like, if you just had the action to act, anything could have happened. So we'll, we'll, we'll just go. We'll just go a little bit deeper here. Uh, remember, I serve Allah and no matter what happens, he will be with me. Anything more interesting? Okay, I start skipping through these parts. Run, you morons, he shouted. Oh, yeah, okay. So he gets rescued. Brett gets rescued, um, but it's a trap, but it's the stupidest trap ever. Um, like some seals or some shit. I, don't, I can't fucking remember. Some special forces guys go to get him out of, the, out of Tehran. So, okay. Um, and the building is wired to explode. Before that, he managed to like goad i think it was muhammad from earlier into attacking him and then he jack bowered him with like a pen or whatever the fuck and killed him and got out of his stuff and then ran and then when he looks up he sees explosives covering the ceiling this is fucking awesome because this is also ben does not understand how fucking bombs work uh doo -doo 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 -doo. they smashed their way down the hallway no time for discretion now as the basement exploded 
you're dead now. If the basement of the building you're in explodes enough to go out of the basement, every, you're dead. You're, you're, you're fucking dead. I'm sorry. The likelihood of you ex living in a, a, where a small bomb goes off inside of a building that you're in, the likelihood of you living is almost non-existent. Sorry to say, especially if it's enough to do any damage to anything. Um, but don't worry, he's fast. So uh, two of the men fell. Brett vaulted over them, yelling at them to get up, grabbing one by his bulletproof vest and virtually throwing him down the hallway with his good hand. He does like a fucking Baki maneuver. He jumps over the guys, picks up a whole human being with a flak jacket on, and then tosses him ahead of himself, which is sick. Baki Hanma, fucking Yujiro level shit. Uh, Brett vaulted them. Da -da -da. Civilians' heads popped out into the hallway as the explosion registered. I don't know what that means. Brett looked over his shoulder to see them engulfed in the flame that poured down the hallway like water through a flooding pipeline. <laughs> a blast of heat rocketed him through the door at the end of the hallway. The other operatives sprinted ahead of him. One man behind him screamed inhumanely, inhumanly as the fire caught him. Shout out to only knowing about how, like, when all of your knowledge of bombs is just based on fucking uh, Mossad agents pouring gasoline and fucking other accelerants into holes that, like, Pakistan or Palestinian people are hiding in and then setting it on fire. Like, that that's, I guess, how you know about fucking bombs. B bombs are... The only reason they work is because they're, like, instantaneous, okay? It's just a massive release of... And it, it's literally... To the sound of me snapping, it's faster than that goes to this microphone, okay? It's, it's, it's all of the speed. The boom is the air breaking the sound barrier, all right? It, it, it just, it's, <laughs> it just goes. There are such things as fuel accelerant bombs. Uh, maybe they did that too but it won't rush down the hallway it'll actually suck you down the hallway and all the oxygen so that it can set on fire and then once you've been sucked back into the building uh immolated it will blow what's left of you back out of the building because that's how that works you are not jogging faster than the explosion <laughs> i don't know how to say that any nicer um that's uh that's it yeah if especially if it's wired explosive by the way it's going to be fucking semtex and shit or it's going to be anything that can be wired that way basically with detonators and shit is not going to be like a, a strictly like a fuel accelerant bomb like you know basically like 16 m80s and a can a coke can full of gasoline type shit that's just supposed to and like cover you with burning fire like it, if it's wired, it's Semtex because no one's going to waste their time with something that's less stable and less effective. You know what I mean? It, it, it's plastic explosive wired up or variants of the same thing, repurposed other explosives that just work the same way. The second he looked up and like the bombs started going off, uh, he got turned into pate <laughs> and the building is falling down right on top of you. Um, the bombs are stronger when they're under pressure right it makes it even stronger so like a bomb in the open you know if when they say don't close your hand on fireworks that's the same thing so ben for next time just think on fourth of july knowledge and it will guide you a little further i won't get more technical than that because i'm running out of time um austin texas ellen okay so this is the beginning of the irritating part brett comes home and politics begins but it is, and I can't express this enough, Ben Shapiro politics. So it's based in his fantasy land of how things work, and it's wild. I can't really get deep into this because it would take me so many fucking hours. I will stay over tonight, okay? I know I'm not talking enough to you guys. I will stay over, and we will get through this. Um, I guess I had more to talk about than I thought. Uh, he has survivor's guilt, but not really. Uh, Ellen, I wasn't supposed to live. That wasn't the message I gave. I blinked airstrike, not tactical mission, not rescue, airstrike. Who cares? 
You're a fucking prisoner. Maybe next time don't get captured and then you can order the airstrike. But sweetheart, you're alive. You're coming home. I know you feel guilty. I know you never meant to leave your men behind, but you alive is better than you dead. Me alive isn't better than a Shami dead. That's the fucking imam or whatever. He was there, Ellen. He was there. I gave them the location. I knew they'd have, they'd have time to take the shot, but Prescott, damn him, didn't have the balls. He just didn't. And now Ashami's out there, planning. He's smart, Ellen, smart as hell, and he steps ahead of us. We were lucky to get out alive. If it hadn't been for a stupid thing, a stupid thug named Yusuf, we'd all be dead. Okay, so he kills Yusuf, not Muhammad. Sorry, just Arab name three. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there, there's just more to that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so in the next chapter, uh, next little chunk, we go to... Uh, man, I've just got to skip ahead. I'm going to look at a bunch of this and then just describe what fucking happens. Uh, Soledad continues her travels throughout North Dakota, going through places. Um, yeah, let me just... Let me skip, because I can. I know if I can get to a certain chunk, I can just kind of summarize all of this shit. Oh, uh, one of the guys, Hassan, who is the the good black guy, converts to Islam and becomes also the good Muslim guy at some point during this. When he's reintroduced, um, he we find out that he got really into Islam in college, but then he got out of it because of bad Muslims. So there is a redemption route for Muslims, and it is definitely working with white Christian American forces against Muslims until they're pacified okay <laughs> uh, but there's just an interesting part in this he'd moved to virginia for work attended mosque at the dar al hijra islamic center near washington dc which i have to only have to assume is a real place there he'd met anwar al, -Wal al walaki <laughs> charismatic scholarly soft-spoken brilliant al walaki quickly built a following in the mosque if you guys don't know that's the first american um, I believe that uh, we ever killed is like a direct act of war, you know, target. Uh, we blew him up. And I think, I think we blew him up in Pakistan um, like 10 years ago with a drone strike or something. That's just fucking awesome. Okay. During this part that I skipped, because I have to skip it, because it is so much fucking talking and bullshit. Soledad, the, the rancher who has nothing to do with any of this and literally won't until the very end of this whole thing because it's the Shapiro verse. She just travels through the Midwest across the North in the general direction of New York, eventually deciding that she's going to assassinate the president with a plastic gun because I don't know. She's a rancher <laughs> and that's just something that happens. Um, Levon does fucking nothing relative to the plot. He occasionally talks to Prescott and kisses his ass, the president Prescott, and um, that goes fucking nowhere. But Levon is just interestingly enough, he leads a riot and one some fucking like a like a Reverend Jesse Jackson, all Sharpton race grifter, who's his like boss race grifter. He shoots him to death and then blames Whitey, basically. Um, and that's sufficient to get every black person in Detroit mad. And they join together and it's very, very like described as kind of being like a sea of faces as in like maybe kind of like a, like a million man march type deal. Um, and they go and take over Detroit from the mayor like, like the mayor of detroit who's just like a beleaguered every democratic politician in this story by the way is like he he ran on promises of of jobs and and giving money to poor people but he also did a sex scandal or a bribery and so was in a bad position and then thing happened um so this this black dude levon just takes over he just becomes the fucking king of detroit which is awesome um by just he just he just literally sean king's his way to being the literal king of detroit um there's no other way to describe it he becomes like a petty tyrant 
somehow, if you guys have never seen Detroit, I'm not even going to bring up a map. I was considering this, but it's too long. The the actual like breakdown of True Allegiance because it's so fucking convoluted and like self referential and involved while being boring as fuck. If De- Detroit is huge and it borders Canada, a sovereign nation, um, to the point where it shares infrastructure basically with the Canadians, like the fucking Ambassador Bridge is literally half in Detroit. Okay, that's very important. He blocks all exit on major thoroughfares out of Detroit, which any Detroiter will tell you would take most of the entire United States Army. Like, you could probably block off the biggest interstates with enough people, assuming you block them off at the right place and you couldn't use the most, it is the most automobile accessible city in America, basically, other than like places like fucking Austin, Texas or whatever. It's a series of rings of roads and then roads spreading out. It's meant to be driven through. So it is also summarily impossible to block off. But he says he basically blocks everybody into and then also out of Detroit, Michigan. Wild. Um, that's, that's basically like the end of his thing. Uh, at a certain point, I guess there's other black people also race grift themselves, I think into being like the petty tyrant Kings of other, like, um, liberal cities. Right. And, um, we're going to get, we're, we're digging down to the inciting. It's the most interesting thing that happens, which is the thing that happens at the very beginning. Um, do, 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 do. And actually, okay, yeah, I, I think I, I think I'm, I'm I'm right around where I need to be at sixty percent, and then I can start getting into stuff. The Brooklyn bo- Bridge bombing from the beginning was a terror plot, of course, because if a bad thing happens in Shapiroverse, it's because of Mexicans, uh, Muslims, or black people, right? Uh, the three M's, <laughs> BMM. Blacks, Muslims, and Mexicans, okay? They they are literally the harbingers of all evil, and they are the useful idiots to their act- literal inborn evil are just white people that are too ignorant to understand the inherent evil of them. I shit you not. I don't know a different way to interpret this. It There is no... There are no sympathetic... Muslim characters except for one guy who doesn't he's just not interested in the conflict side of it so he's just like I'm on the Christian side the Muslims are crazy he gets killed by the way spoilers um his black friend who's also his Muslim friend um gets killed uh, off screen he dies he has his throat slit in a bathtub it might have even been on screen but sometimes um Ben puts whole after se- series whole fucking pages upon pages of crushingly uninteresting um west wing style dialogue that goes back and forth about shit no one could possibly care about written with all of the the subtlety and care of beating uh, anything to death with a hammer i don't even want whatever um there will be a chunk like this where it's like, and then the major plot point happened. And then we have to go into another series of, of like, you know, CNN appearances and conversations from anchors, you know, oh, the, the, the it's, it's, it's in fucking sessant. Um, there is a single good one. Yes. Um, da, 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 wait, don't forget the whiny bitch Prescott. Wait, is he white? Prescott is a white dude. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's just a, he's just a fucking, uh, a good idiot. All of this happens so that the idea is after, and we find this sort of out through Soledad's eyes. I don't know. She's kind of on a, uh, Stephen King's the stand journey through America. We <laughs> in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn bridge collapses because of a terror plot and kills, I don't know, enough people to fit on the Brooklyn bridge. I don't know how many people that would be. We'll say 10,000 people, a small city died. I don't care if that number is accurate because it doesn't even matter. Um, Prescott deploys every National Guardsman in America to Brooklyn to clean this up, which is 
um, insane and unnecessary. It's described as that in the book, but also in, in True Allegiance, Minot, North Dakota, Air, uh, Army Air Base Minot, which I can't remember exactly what that's called, but I probably have some airmen in here who know about the Minot Air Base. It's a very big one. It basically keeps Minot alive. Um, Minot, North Dakota, where I've been to before. I, I, I worked in Williston, so I've been to Minot. Why not Minot is actually their, it's, it's their slogan. Why not Minot? My friend Josh once said uh, they should change it. He got in trouble for this. He got yelled at. He said, because he, he said it in a paper. He said that they should change it to my not. Uh, uh, we have a mall because <laughs> they have one mall. It's the shape of a Y and has no good stores in it. With all due respect, my not. You know how it is. You know the score. He says that the entire Minot Air Base has been emptied of personnel to the point where, like anybody could like walk in. Basically, is the vibe I got um, to support the cleanup of the Brooklyn Bridge disaster, which will by no means be as big as even like Katrina. With all due respect to the New Yorkers, you still have a bunch of bridges and tunnels to still get back in and out of the city. Unless I don't think that it's said that those are closed. And at that point you're just pouring, pulling cars out. And then, you know, the Corps of engineers should get there and build a new bridge in like a few months once the cleanup's done. But for some, it's every, like every national guards person from like every Midwestern state, which is so many, I think hundreds, like a hundred thousand people probably, or more. Also, these are air, the air base is like, has full-time army personnel and stuff too. They're just gone. They had to go over there for reasons just to stand around and tax the infrastructure. As they said, it makes no fucking sense. Um, there's no discussion of like, like Prescott does it. He's the president, but also I guess in a way, like the King of New York, um, the mayor, I don't think the mayor of New York has really discussed extensively. He's not a character that I can remember and like his reaction to it or like the New York fire department's reaction to it or the state of New York's own national guard, which just exists and is already in New York. Or, and I believe there's a Navy base or some sort of naval outstation in New York. There's definitely Coast Guard outstations, um, whatever you guys call them in the Coast Guard, in New York. Because New York has a port of call. Port of call, New York. Uh, one of the largest ports on Earth is uh, New York Harbor. Um, the Hudson Harbor. Whatever the fuck. All of those. All it, It's the East Coast. So, the entirety of the Navy which are they're non-active and on ship deployed off the coast of America, they can come and help. You do not have to get people um, to get on planes, trains, and automobiles and travel from the Midwest to help New York. Uh, the, the Marine Corps Camp Lejeune is in North Carolina. Quantico is in Virginia. There's multiple bases around that. You have uh, Fort Bragg. You have Cherry Point, North Carolina. You have um, the entire Chesapeake Bay naval apparatus because this is the Brooklyn Bridge on the Brooklyn River. If I remember correctly, you can get it just goes to the ocean. <laughs> you can have all of the, the entire naval um, wreckage and retrieval crews that work in the Chesapeake Bay all the way up north to come and help. No, we emptied out... Uh, uh, air <laughs> Army Air Station Minot to help pull people out of the fuck. I think it's the Hudson River. Why? Like, what? What? If you're trying to make this point about all of these things, you have to at some point establish you have the remotest understanding of anything you're talking about, which I don't think Ben Shapiro ever does. I refute leftist assertion online that Ben Shapiro is somehow some fucking mastermind smart guy. He's literally just a little rat boy. A, a, a little cheese-eating 5'6 rat boy who hides in the walls. Um, that's a meme. Who talks fast and has a Harvard diploma if not necessarily a Harvard education. I've never really seen him put that to use. I've never seen like, the moment where he's like, well, at Harvard, I now know thing. The dude knows nothing about the military. Detrimentally, almost the opposite of it. To the point where it, like, he doesn't even understand like the basic politics of how the military works. Outside of the Texas 
National Guard is on the border and Texas just wants to kill more attempted immigrants for the reason that maybe one or two of them might be a fucking drug dealer. That's like what that's what Bubba Davis wants. Bubba Davis. It is uh, the East River. Thank you. Uh, I knew it wasn't the Brooklyn Bridge because that's the drug. There's a Brooklyn River, but the Brooklyn Bridge doesn't go over the Brooklyn River. It goes over the East River. And then something else that's another borough's name goes over the Brooklyn River, right? I don't fuck. I don't give a shit. Fuck you, New York. Fuck. Hey, I fuck. Gabagool. New Jersey stinks. Hey, bridge and tunnel crowd coming in here. You pay if you pay fucking eight thousand dollars to live on on the fucking sweaty underside of a ball sack, then fuck you. All right. Broadway's not that cool. Uh. Yeah. So, um, during this, our boy Brett, who is a general in the United States Marine Corps, I believe, even if he's in the army, it doesn't really matter. I swear to God, I heard he was in the Marines. I I could be wrong. He goes to, uh, New York as a, just alone as a journey. He's still an active duty general. He might be like on like the, 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 the Bagley, but like he's a general with access to all sorts of general shit. Like he knows other generals. He should know all sorts of people in the military. You should have an insane amount of connections. Um, he goes alone to New York City and then starts uh, racially profiling all people named Muhammad that have arrived at JFK National Airport. Tommy bit his lip. Well, you see, it's what he's doing here that could be problematic. I just got word from my guy at JFK that he's digging around flight manifests and that he's asked to see pictures of Arabs first. <laughs> This is the White House Chief of Staff reporting to Prescott that that they know where Brett is. Brett goes to JFK and then just starts going like, hey, um, fucking give me all the air. I want to see pictures of every person named Muhammad. Search the Arabs first. (laughs) There's a whole chunk of it. I'm not going to get into it because I think I I can't repeat any of it. Like, really? But he's really upset with the airport guy who's just an employee of the airport, who's like, I, I don't think general, random general from the military that I should let you start hunting Arabs that have flown through here. Oh my God. Um, Ellen and this whole time, the, Ellen frequently goes back and forth from like Washington, D.C. because she knows she owes the president like a favor or like she's scared that he's going to do something to Brett. It's convoluted as fuck. Um, and she works with slash Bubba Davis is like her best friend now instead of just her mere employer. And she's the go between between them. And then she goes back to New York uh, to do stuff. Minot is empty. Another, this is uh, like. This is any given backstory, by the way. When I don't get into other side characters, every side character sounds like this. If they're brown, okay, then um, something maybe bad happened, but also, like, they decided to start doing crime because any adversity. All white people have this sort of backstory. Aiden had grown up in Detroit, he said. He knew the city well. His grandfather worked for General Motors, had a union job that was supposed to keep him employed all his life. Then foreign cars began flooding the American market, and the auto union contracts meant that American car companies couldn't compete. Jobs started fleeing. As they did, the government of the city decided to raise taxes dramatically on the people who still held jobs on the companies that still decided to stay in town. They left, too. Mayor after mayor took office, promising to bring business back, then pandered by crushing businesses that remained. The tax base disappeared. A complete ignorance of how Reaganomics destroyed the American working class by just your average Republican mouthpiece. But like that's why Aiden Aiden's a terrorist now. He was a SWAT guy, I believe. He's one of the SWAT guys that helped Soledad. Now he's a terrorist. Um, he dies. He dies to a Hellfire missile strike. <laughs> um, this is just a good line. Ezekiel Gafford, have you seen us? We stick out like a KKK rally in Harlem. No chance they don't find us at least and at least neutralize us. No, here's what we're going to do. That's just an amazing line because why do you have to stick out? Why Harlem? Wh- where would a KKK rally not stick out? You can just end it there. <laughs> I 
I'm as natural as a KKK rally at Harvard. <laughs> We're back to Levon. This is the stuff I already told you about. Levon becomes uh, the king of Detroit. They beat up some guys that maybe are racist, but maybe not. But they are white and they are bikers, so they just assume they are. Uh, black people turn into zombies, basically, at this point in the book. If you're a black person in Detroit, your motives are never entertained or discussed or, like, dug into. Like, there's Levon, who's, like, the king of black people now because he took the throne from, like, the other guy by shooting him in a bathroom. Um, and other black people are sort of around him at times, but then once he makes them mad, they start attacking like zombies. I, I shit you not. It, it's like more like, uh, you know, that one, um, Timothy Oliphant movie, the crazies. It's more like that. Soledad goes and breaks out the cop. That's about to be basically like lynched by all of the black people that are taking over Detroit. Um, they chase them into a garage and then the black people like find motorcycle keys. They're also just trying to like beat their way into the van. It's, it's a hundred percent like a zombie apocalypse thing. They they're running at them at the white people while the white people are in a van. They run one of them over blum, 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 blum. and then the other one's trying to like break the window down. And then the guy like calmly rolls the window down and shoots the dude in like the arm with a 22 and that just takes the dude out but it's like the same like it's a fucking zombie apocalypse shit and then those those black dudes jump on like motorcycles like some of they it, it's down here hold on in front of the van the two would-be motorcyclists had found keys somehow and swerved their motorcycles to block the exit these are not these men's motorcycles these are i think the motorcycle gang's motorcycles to get out, Iden would have to go right through them, and they held handguns. But you can't hold handguns and motorcycles. So really, just two guys with handguns were in your way. Because you need both hands to drive a motorcycle. It's actually really... Also, if those aren't those guys' motorcycles, um, do they know how to drive a motorcycle? It's actually really hard. It's a fucking... It's their manual transmissions. You have to know how to clutch and, and do all sorts of stuff. God damn it. Part three... I feel like I've talked about so much shit. All right, there's a reason I look fucking disheveled and insane. I'm so sorry I haven't talked about you guys enough. <laughs> how about that sentence structure? You can't even stick with it. You can't even just talk about how badly it's written because there's so fucking much. Shout out to everybody. I didn't take a break tonight. I'm going straight through. This is Howard Hughes night with me because I have to fin. I'm not talking about it again tomorrow and I can't finish the night without having it done. I hope you guys like what you fucking did to me. I, all of those times I've ever seen the fucking like channel awesome people do, they're like, well, I can't do a long car. Huh? Well, here it is. I finally, I finally am reviewing all of Marvel. <laughs> what is it? Marvel. <laughs> Here at the top the fourth wall, you really like to run me through the ringer. <laughs> This is the one that's actually unironically like murderous. It is. It only takes like two or so hours. I don't know how long it really is. The, the technical total read time for me was like three hours and 15, 20 minutes. Five paragraphs of this feel like a thousand years. I finished this shit like in I walked out of my fucking bedroom to talk to my wife like I was fucking Captain America coming back like is showing up at the funeral of Tony Stark from from the past. <laughs> fucking No, I don't think I will. Were you going to are you going to split this into two different streams? No. I don't think I will. <laughs> We're going to finish this bitch. We're finishing this. Um, the call from Hassan came in the middle of the night. Okay, so this is Hassan. He's not dead yet, uh, but he dies soon. I, I highlighted that. That doesn't even matter. It's just, I'm not even going to talk about it. He hesitated. I have backdoor. We even, we have every trope eventually of like old bad action movies gets hit. This one's just for my people that know programming because it's fucking awesome. Um, he hesitated. I have backdoor access to most of the security cameras in the New York mosques. It has taken me years. How much of that is legal under this president? Don't ask if you don't want to know. 
This is a Muslim. The good Muslim. The good Christian supporting Muslim in this. Luke Oscar, $10. Thank you for your mental anguish, Tyler. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. It, it was unironic, like legitimately difficult. The one good Muslim in the entire book uh, that has a name and gets to talk to the main character and remain a good guy until the end is illegally wiretapping most of the security cameras in the New York mosques. I don't even really know how to like break down this sentence, right? The New York mosques. Because normally you would say in mosques throughout New York. Um, that's just said like you talk about those in terms of trying to get them like shut down as part of like a Jewish group, you know? Like you're the Shabbat people up there that we found out about. Like we need to get this... We need to we need to talk about the New York mosques. You know what I mean? We need to move, what, what's with these the New York mosques? <laughs> it's a really weird way, especially for like an Intel person to refer to those. You know, because like it. you want to get specific for the kind of information that you know. So like I have like cameras in all of them. I have cameras in mosques like throughout like the five boroughs or whatever. Like say like a little bit. I have mosques cameras on mosques that like all of this guy went to in Brooklyn would make more sense and also sound less kind of insane but I have backdoor access to most of the security cameras and the New York mosques it has taken me years buddy it doesn't it's not going to take you years it's never it's never going to happen cuz first off what backdoor <laughs> I worked in security uh, right, actually, right when I moved here, I worked in security. All of the security cameras were wired. They they didn't go out to anything. It was just it was a closed CCTV, closed circuit television. It, it there's no there's no back door to it, unless you run a gigantic fucking cable into the box under my desk, and then put like a Wi-Fi out on it. I don't even. <laughs> I'm not saying it's impossible. But that's certainly a lot of work. Uh, it's a closed circuit television. That, that's what most security cameras are. Those are the, those are the really affordable ones. Now you have the other ones. You know, like now you can like, like he hacked into every nest cam in a mosque. Also, like, why are all these mosques? Like, I, I don't even know enough about uh, Islam, but like, I feel in general, like videoing your prayer and stuff is probably not typical and maybe it is oh shit sorry about that but like what are the cameras face like what are they is it fuck like is it hitman <laughs> agent agent fucking 88 <laughs> fucking, every mosque has like a series of really really great cameras that help you get just like advantage if you're trying to sneak in there and assassinate somebody what the fuck do you mean it's just such a weird thing to say. It would just be so much better if you just said, like, I, I've been tailing a specific guy. Like, you could give Hassan. I love that it's Hassan, too, by the way. Um, just a, 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 fu a crumb, a fucking speck of agency. And just be like, he has been doing his own very good investigation into the same guy you're looking at. And, like, you ran back into him through serendipity. Not just, like, as a Muslim... My biggest priority is just spying on Muslims. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, he dies like almost immediately after this. Of course, this is uh, Anjum Omari is talking. This is Omari's the main main bad guy, who's connected to the other main bad guys. Uh, the the all of the Muslim people in this and Persian people, whatever the fuck, and era whatever. <sighs> They're all interchangeable, impossible to tell apart. They have no personalities other than like uh, they generally do like a Dirk Dirk Muhammad Jihad type vibe to each other, sort of. Oh, Dirk Dirk Allah, you know what I mean? Um, th there's no real like reverence or understanding actually paid to to any semblance of Islam, like. You know, you, you, he puts stuff in like, you know, parentheses, like, because people are wearing like that little bit of, of clothing, like a takia or whatever the fuck, a headscarf, this or that. But like, nobody says like bismillah to the, to each other, you know, like, like there's, there's none, almost none of that. 
Um, you get the one God is great, the whatever surah that is on everybody's flag, you know, Allah, wa ila, Allah, wa Allah. I'm sorry, I'm not like a fucking radical, like secret Muslim, by the way. I just find the people that I did a war with for a while a little interesting, and I tried to learn more about them after I was done. But, you know, you have Bismillah, which is very common. It's all, all, all the time. Or Inshallah. Inshallah is like God wills it. Like, eh. Eh. The inshallah. You know what I mean? Or like, you can say like, inshallah, I wish for like, blah, 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 blah. Like, you can just throw that shit in. And it's a little bit. A little bit better. Like, a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? But we don't even get that. You don't even get the translations. You don't even have like, you know, like, fucking Muhammad, praise be upon him. Like, God willing, we'll see like this, you know, what a, like, ah, with, with, with God's glory upon me, you know, whatever the fuck. Mashallah, like I hope peace and safety be right. I don't even think I might not have been paying enough attention, but I don't even think they do uh, alaikum ala salam. Uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, assalamu alaikum, alaikum ala salam, which is like the most common greeting. You know what I mean? Like, th the most common greeting in, in any Muslim country because it's just like, it's just thing. It's like saying shalom. Like, it's actually quite literally the same language chunk um as shalom if you're a fucking if you're a jewish person like, yeah shalom you know what i mean like hey what's up it, it, but it like none of that's in there there's no respect paid to it but you do get the second something pops off you know hey pakistani or fucking yeah palestinians are in the street fucking celebrating the 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 the, the fucking terrorisms it's madness um but yeah this guy and jim omari he's in there whatever the fuck I'm approached by many Muslims. I am blessed by Allah in having a wide following and a grand platform. How would I know the man you seek? <laughs> I don't know why I highlighted that. I think that was to make the same point. I just got to it ahead of time. This is just a great line, too. Brett could feel the anger building. He flexed his fist, then let it go. An old trick Ellen had taught him to take his mind off his temper. It wasn't working. That's the wildest shit I've ever... He just does the Arthur. It's the Arthur meme. <laughs> do you... Do you not know any other coping mechanisms? How about hold your breath and count to ten? Since when is just making a little fist and then letting it go a coping mechanism that anybody has ever used and shared? Ellen taught me this one years ago. He's a Marine, by the way. Or, like, well, in general. I don't know. I feel like I'm more and more incorrect that he was in the Marine Corps. I'm just asso as associating Kabul, which I believe was a Marine base, with it. So I could be completely off base. Um, for somebody that's in the military, he almost never talks about it in, like, terms that I would understand. Also, Ginger B. Sweetums, incredible props to making this all somehow entertaining. Coming out of this more knowledgeable was not what I was expecting. Uh, I... I, I'm glad you guys are enjoying yourselves. I'm having a good time. Um, I might cut a little bit of time out of stream tomorrow. I, th I, I think I still have like 40 minutes left to go. And I I have to finish it because I'm not doing any more tomorrow. Tomorrow I want to talk about stuff I'm actually interested in. But like, fuck. we're As much as I talked, as much as I've talked, 71% of the way through. This point, I could toss you out of the military for this, General. Prescott's eyes were steely blue dots in a puffy red field. Okay, yes, Prescott is white. Thank you. You've gone too far this time. Go ahead. I love to tell the press just why you did. Because you wouldn't keep this country safe. You weren't willing to make the tough choices. This is, I'm going to kick you out of the military <clears throat> for going alone. As a general in the United States military, a brigadier general in the United States military, you went alone to New York to start rifling through records you have no right or access to or need to see to hunt Muslims by the name Muhammad that went to a fucking airport. You, we, I'm not, I, you, I don't have to say that that's the reason we're kicking you out. I can relieve you of your duty for you just being fucking AWOL. You're not supposed to, you can go AWOL. You're a general. You just went AWOL. You're out. Uh, conduct unbefitting. You're out. That's the most mentally fucking unwell thing I've ever heard. You're out. I can put you on medical leave, forced medical leave. I'm the fucking president. You're out. So many different things. 
And, and like Ben Shapiro chooses like the vibes were off. <laughs> like in the real world, even if this general was like a hundred percent correct, I would still stand behind him being booted. You're a fucking general. I, I can't explain this enough. It's like the closest thing I can get to you is like, hey, um, you are the regional manager of an entire like chain of like Macy's, right? So you're supposed to be running all of these Macy's. Yes. So why why did you go across the country from the region that you're supposed to be to uh, a fucking McDonald's and then start pouring all of their f their fry vat oil on the ground? Well, I did it for America, sir. It, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's not your job, and you also did your job wrong. <laughs> what the fuck? You're, you're fired, but also we have people here who are going to take you to mental health services, which I know Ben that wrote, that we're in the Shapiro verses, so mental health services are just like, we tell you God's not real, and then like set you on fire in a garden or something. I don't know, but <laughs> you don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. But also, maybe you can't go home. It's insanity. Prescott's mad about it. Um, fucking, he gets arrested, but then also he gets like betrayed. Uh, what goes? Uh, uh, yeah, the the, the fucking the, right around here is literally when Levon becomes the like king of Detroit. Levon had set his headquarters up inside the now abandoned detention center. I don't know why. He he like replaces the mayor on the mayor's but for some reason he sets his Well not for some reason. It's Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro's like, well, of course the black guy would want to rule from jail. <laughs> ben Shapiro is one black main character. Um, rules over Detroit from a prison. Uh, he sets up his headquarters in the now abandoned detention center. Overnight, Levon had become de facto mayor of the city. Without the force of the National Guard to back them, the local police had fallen into a standoff position with the protesters, but Mayor Burns refused to authorize action to push Levon and his men out of the building, believing that such action would be too provocative. Every, every fucking sentence is written like this. Levon had quickly set up a system of runners among various positions in the city. He knew enough about civilian surveillance, surveillance practices that he didn't trust electronic communications. The city had gone silent and cold. Many residents wanted to flee but feared they couldn't get out of the city limits without being brutalized by roving gangs, roving bands of street gangs. Mel Gibson helped them, them write. Right? Where have we heard that one before? Mr. Gibson, would you like to join the conversation? Just roving bands of what now? Oh, of street gangs. That's what, and then not quite flow off the tongue. Roving bands of, of what now? Not roving packs of any. The fucker. The, the gangs had even set up roadblocks on the major traffic arteries, of which Detroit is only made of. They were confiscating property from those who tried to leave, telling them that everyone had to be searched in order to ensure that there was no connection to the white supremacist group that had murdered Jim Crawford. First off, I get why this is scary to white people uh, and Ben Shapiro, because it's black people doing it. But unironically, this is just what being part of the drug war is like in most communities. It's wild. Because it, he goes into, uh, eventually we get into this with fucking um, Levon's whole thing, is that he creates his own police force from black people, oh, which is somehow the worst possible police force because black people are predominantly criminals. Um, it goes into this. Hold on. Let me just, I, I won't try if I can say it out loud. Um, I'll have to get, I'll get to it eventually. But basically he makes his own police force out of, black people because he knows black people out in the detention center where he rules from from prison um and it's not it doesn't work as well and then he wins like a fight with like the power company who turns off all of the power <laughs> in certain areas i'll have to get to it but it's insane it's also wild because like there's so many cops who are just criminals <laughs> and cops will like set up roadblocks in bad neighborhoods and then rob the people literally leaving and going out you call it something else it's whatever fucking uh 
I can't remember. It's the legal term for legal confiscation of stuff under suspicion. Uh, but once they, once they do it, you have to like win a court case against fifty dollars to get it back. So like, cops will run your fucking pockets right now. But they're they are not generally black, so it's fine. They're wearing a uniform, so it's different. <laughs> uh, okay, so we get back to Ellen. Um, in El Paso, uh, Mexico has declared Mexico via cartels have declared war on El Paso. They're just they have conquered El Paso. El Paso has fallen. Um, there's National Guardsmen being abducted and hanged from billboards in the center of town. Plato y Ploma uh, written on them, which is not translated directly into English. It, oh, it is. Sorry, my bad. Silver or lead. In other words, Service pass or die. My bad. My bad. My bad. Governor Governor Davis wasn't in the mood to play. <laughs> Confused Cabal, welcome to Goof. Welcome, buddy. Welcome to the fucking shit show. Uh, okay, so this is just the, the same thing. In El Paso needs additional, fewer regulations for criminal pursuit and more National Guardsmen because we are literally, we have to start shooting as many people as we can in order to like save people from, from the drug dealers is basically what this all boils down to. Um, <laughs> there's also an, an incident happens where we have, it's the military version of the police killing. This one is a national guardsman shooting a bunch of people, uh, six people. They're found dead. They were protesters and their bodies were riddled with bullets. This is, um, this is Ben Shapiro. I included this because this is like Ben Shapiro. If you're, by the way, if you're a white person and you're poor and you work and you're like, but Ben Shapiro's got my back. He fucking hates you too. And he doesn't know you or understand you or care you about, care about anything that you're going through. Um, he considers you dispensable fucking meat, but you gotta get Ellen saw it on the evening news as the network anchor intoned. I don't know why you use that tag. What you are about to watch is very graphic. Younger viewers are advised not to watch. Which is just, why, why is that written? You work in news. Why is that? Why was that written so fucking clunkily? First off, just the, the content you are about to see is extreme or graphic in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. A have we not all heard that? Am I? Do he doesn't, he has rich people TV. It doesn't have all the same warnings on it. Um, she then cut to grainy, close-range video of a man in a National Guard uniform from behind walking up to a group of tents. Get out of thar. T-H-A-R. This is written, I swear, on fucking hand to God. Get out of thar, the National Guardsman said in a thick Texas accent. Get out of thar, you little wetbacks. Now, we need to take a pause. Because as a as a as a as a as a German descended white, I have to make a few pointers here. Um, one of the first ones is "thar." I don't I don't know what aspect of American English says "thar." <laughs> the, the 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 I I think I do a uh, the East Texas accent is like Joe Bob Briggs is like an East Texas accent, and it sounds like get over there. And it's not thar, it's there. It's still there. It's T H E R E. If you maybe you can get on over there. Holy shit, 50 bucks? Dude, fuck off. Thank you so much, man. Confused Cabal. Just got cut up. This has felt like a four hour long aneurysm. This book needs a warning label for people prone to seizures. <laughs> I love reading, and this book was unironically, unironically one of the hardest books I've ever tried to get through. Um, the last, I, I, I couldn't back out. I couldn't because I, everyone asked for it. And so I had to do it. I fucking had to do it. But it, this is, I am, <laughs> I, I do see how unwell I look. It's not, I'm not this pale and red eyed <laughs> normally. <laughs> I do. It wasn't until somebody gave me $50 that I <laughs> saw that I actually do kind of look. Oh, that's Mexican 50 bucks. Okay. I did raise $2.86. My man gave me 50 pesos, but still sick. <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah, for a second. Oh, I'm fucking Mexican dollars. Chinga. <laughs> no, 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 no. Muchas gracias. Uh, yeah, Mex 50. 
I was stoked for a second. I was like, fifty dollars. Now you see the disappointment, my friend. <laughs> oh my god. Um, give me a second though. And to Tyler, the biggest one is boy. But thank you, thank you. Anyway, still confused. Um, get out of there. Uh, the like, I think it's north. I can't remember, but um. Like the King of the Hills act is like super accent. So all the accents you hear basically in King of the Hill, except for like Peggy's, because she's actually from like up north in like Arkansas or some shit, are like Texas accents. So like that, yeah, yeah. There. Get out of there. Like it's 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 there, but like there. But there's no thar. Hey thar. Maybe like sort of, but like you should change the other ones. Like why was that what you would you, you attach yourself to? Bobby, get out of there. You know what I mean? Like, it's still... You would still just spell it normal. Unless you change everything phonetically. I, it, it's just... A, it's, a, it's a point. But also... Um, and, and this is like... Uh, why you got... Mexican... You don't call Mexicans wetbacks. Uh, this is like a, a gross conversation. But like... There are other racist terms that people will use for them in Texas. I won't get into it. But one of them starts with the name of a cleaning product that ends in and span. Um, and like, that's a very rude word to say. But like, wetbacks specifically means like Puerto Ricans and fucking like Cubans, uh, especially Cubans, because they travel on rafts to Florida and get wet or even to like Corpus Christi, Texas. You know what I mean? And they go around. And I know that's gross. Felt bad for getting your hopes up. Have 30 bucks to soothe the pain. Thank you. <laughs> getting 500 Mexican dollars while trying to explain white racist <laughs> terms for fucking Latino people is a wild. <laughs> Sponsored by Haritos. <laughs> Thank you so much, Confused Cabal. No, it's okay. I'm stupid. It's just late. Um, but that's just a weird mistake to make that he would call them like wetbacks. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. You know, like why you would say that. Um, I just, I feel like I'm kind of disappointed because I just thought like Ben Shapiro would be better at racism. Confused Cabal Super Shadow. And that's disappointing. Felt bad for I, 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 I don't know where to go. 30 there. Bucks to but anyway, pain. don't say no. those words. Okay. Um, they're not the most offensive thing to say, but like it's those are those are potty mouth. Okay, people. Don't 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 test that on your friends. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. um this is just a weird thing. I, this is another like Ben Shapiro talked to somebody in the military, but like I don't know. Um, this is more just Ellen stuff. All of this is Ellen and Bubba talking about the deteriorating situation in, in, in Texas. Like this is just over and over and over again. All of the problems in the Midwest in this are because they sent for some reason, every single national guardsman, except for like a handful to, um, New York for the Brooklyn bridge thing, which we'll come back when we get to the nuclear explosion, small spoiler, but just stick with it. It gets somehow we're when i kept saying i said it wrong a few times i said shapiro land i meant to say the shapiro verse because this book does set up sequels that will probably never exist but there is a ben shapiro extended universe that is implied by all of these other things that are happening he he, he went avengers on this uh but yeah this person says seems to be james easton mclawrence buck sergeant which I feel like is an army thing that I've heard before, but I have never heard the phrase Buck Sergeant while I was in the Marine Corps referring to other Marines. Maybe it's other people do, but like I, I, I just don't recognize that at all. It's just interesting that he's got other things. I feel like he talked to some National Guards people, but even they were like, you should, like, he was like, I'll make it a National Guard general in Kabul. And they're like, no, don't, don't do that. No one will believe you. It's that's unbelievable, Ben. <laughs> oh my God. So let's see. Where we go. Okay. So this is awesome. Um, just at the end of this chapter, 
Brett figures out that there's something happening in New York, like a larger terror plot overall, because, you know, he fucking Jack Bowered a bunch of Muslim people, I guess, and spied on them. Um, I think at some point, okay, no, no. And then he just sends Ellen a message that's like, don't come to New York. And then it's like arrested development. Ellen went to New York <laughs> immediately afterwards. Uh, in Nashville. Okay, so we go to Nashville. This is still the continuing, I, convoluted, right? The the continuing Soledad, uh, whatever her name is, plot. Um, they're outside of Nashville now, which is crazy. Um, they talk about stuff. I don't know. Uh, the, Oh yeah, they reconnoiter because they they came to, they went to Nashville after saving Rick Sol- O'Sullivan, right? The guy that shot the kid. They save him successfully from Black Detroit before the zombie apocalypse happens completely. They manage to get out basically. And so like I, I still don't know why they saved him <laughs> cuz they she doesn't have anything to do but she's like a, a fuck American freedom fighter so like wherever white Wherever white plight exists, she goes like like Zorro for she's the Latina Zor, Zorro for fucking white people. Um, anyway, they're outside of it. They're hanging out, talking about how dangerous shit is. There's so many chunks of this that are just him explaining shit. Like I know I keep telling you guys I'm skipping over stuff, but let me just I'll this is a little bit of what I'm skipping. She was safe. She led a group of good men, men unwilling to bow to a system that hurt people callously, that condemned them to an unled life as the price of living in a civilized society. She knew they called her a barbarian in the press. With the humid air of the Tennessee forest surrounding her, she couldn't care less. Somewhere, Emilio knew what she was doing and why she was doing it. Emilio, by the way, is the guy who moved to East LA and his kid got shot at high school. That's all that mattered, that somebody remembered. Like... Paragraph after paragraph of like barely any important information, but like shit is still happening. But like, who f- who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Anyway, this is like one of the best parts of the book. If I scroll down a little bit, yes. Oh, I guess I did. So they drive away. I guess the feds find them because they're being hunted now for reasons. And I can't remember exactly why, and I don't care. Um, but the feds send a fucking predator drone after these random dudes on fucking mount motorcycles, and uh, one of them who was like, I think the uh, SWAT guy that helped her escape all the way back before. Mind you, Soledad has nothing to do with anything else happening in this book, so it's kind of hard to remember what's going on with her because. There's six different plots happening and none of them are interesting. Um, But they send a fucking predator drone after her and obliterate the dude behind beside her with a fucking with a fucking hellfire missile, just a direct on target. She lives after getting knocked off, which is wild. She's just kind of like, fine. It's a movie explosion. She wasn't supposed to die. So she's just not peppered full of scraps of fucking steel and shit. And like, She's good after crashing, I guess, but like she sees him and he's just like a blob, <laughs> like whatever's left of like shit in a fucking ditch. So he's dead and then they drive away. Uh, oh no, she does get hit in the leg. Sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. But like as far as as far as surviving a hellfire missile on a fucking motorcycle from a predator drone, which by the way has more than like one hellfire missile. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't circle back. Um, and also they do no fucking battle damage assessment. So the, the whole point of this scene is to set up that, like, they think Soledad is, Soledad is dead, even though she's still alive. Because they do no battle damage assessment, which is not a thing that happens, to check to see if the bodies are there. They're just like, oh, fuck, hit and go, you know. When you have Ben Shapiro's relationship with drones, it's just a bad thing that happens to people, but generally it's okay because you blow up Muslim weddings with it. But for him, like, he's like, oof, you know, the, the concern after like, he's like, well, you know, I mean, if you hit a wedding in Pakistan with a hellfire missile, I mean, why do you have to look again? You, uh, it, it's like a, a wife with two black eyes. You've already told her twice. <laughs> Ugh. We're still going. Levon, we're back to Levon. Uh, oh yeah. They start calling that lady terrorist mama. 
uh, Soledad. Plus a deserter from the SWAT team designated to take her down. So this is, okay, so this is Tommy Bradley, the White House Chief of Staff, is now hanging out with Levon. Uh, this doesn't really go anywhere. It just shows that like they're all cool with each other because they're trying to like build up like a coalition by like being like, hey, this is a, a young black leader. He's pretty cool, even though he's like he he's like it's like Mad Max level like king of Detroit shit. <laughs> Look at this young black leader. He's really like. <laughs> This is what all Democrats truly believe. Um, this is where we get to Levon's police force. And Levon began to build his force. He began with those nearest to him. At first, he thought to use only men and women with no criminal record. That would prevent anyone from claiming that he wanted to undermine the nature of the force. But he soon realized that too many young black men had spent time behind bars. He quickly changed the rules with the mayor's approval. Now anyone who had been convicted of a nonviolent felony, most of these were drug crimes, could be considered for employment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the final blow to the police enrollment standards came in the area of education. The standard for the department had always been a high school degree or an equivalent. Yeah, that real high. <laughs> The bar, the bar is at fucking McDonald's first shift opener. High school diploma, carry a gun. <laughs> now with the applications pouring in because, you know, all these people are like, fuck. Now I want to be a cop, you know, like what the fuck? <laughs> Levon had to face the fact that not enough applicants had graduated from high school. Many had dropped out. Again, he cited racial disparities in changing the policy, explaining that every trainee would be given remedial education necessary to do the job. How can you expect people to work their way up the ladder if we don't give them the chance to get to the first rung, he asked. That's just a good point. Because, unironically, I don't know what the fuck difference having or not having a high school diploma does when it comes to police. Because it's not, it, it's a, it's a small change. I have a college degree, all right, that I got because I was good at military and didn't die. <laughs> I got free college. Um, I still, with all that experience, I still find the possibility of going into neighborhoods that I don't live in with a gun and like enforcing the law in them to be an extraordinary extraordinary fucking responsibility beyond the abilities of most people having or not having a high school diploma means literally nothing to me um if you can train them up to do it then do it you can join the military without a fucking high school diploma you can get a gd they can find waivers for it honestly if you can hire somebody that seems like they can do the job and aren't just going to start fucking shooting 10 year olds in front of gas stations as a, as a minimum bar. I don't care. I don't care. The, the funniest part about this is, um, one of these, it, it said something about drugs at one point. I didn't notice all of it, but it was, um, somebody was talking about, no, it, I think it's actually a little bit later. A guy used to be a druggie and then, joined the federal police in high school or after graduating high school and getting his life back together. This happens like a little bit later, which is not possible. Almost every single federal police variant, FBI, DEA, CIA, um, all of those NSA fucking hold on. I think I got one more department of Homeland security. They have full, fully preventative measures from hiring former drug users. The FBI, uh, I checked this out when I was considering joining just because I needed a fucking job and I wanted to get paid more, um, is 10 years, which disqualified me. And I hadn't done anything that was on the list in like fucking five or six, you know, a decade. You have to go a decade without doing any of the drugs that are on the FBI's list. I think the DEA has a similar requirement. Uh, the CIA's is two, which is still wild because it's the fucking CIA. But they also say, hey, call us anyway because, you know, CIA, uh, which is gnarly. Gnarly, an insane amount of time. Um, if a kid gets his life together at 15 years old, gets his life together but still did drugs, you know what I'm saying? Uh, how about even uh, gets his life together at 22, right? You fucked up bad. You fucked up high school, but you get your life together at 22 and you want to change the world. 
right? A guy that never did drugs until the day after he graduates from F- the FBI is technically more able to be in the FBI than you until you're 32 years old. What is the point of that law? All right. If you're like a computer science major, by the way, this is the other. If you're a computer science major and you smoke weed and maybe do a little little fucking extra shit while you're in college, becoming a computer science engineer, whatever the fuck, you, you're a systems engineer, right? You know how to do black hat, white hat, protective fucking uh, security programming. You might have one of the most in-demand skill sets ever, but you can't join the FBI's cyber program until you're 32 and you have to not do anything between that. Like what in the fuck is the point of that? Like who is that for? Who, who, how, how does that help America? Like I, I'm pretty sure if we have to like, you know, Hey man, I can go to Silicon Valley and make $320,000 a year, spend $200,000 a year on housing, get away with 120 K or I can go work for the FBI 10 years from now after, I don't know, doing something <laughs> fucking insane. Um, I, I support like a reeducate. Like, yeah, fucking what? Okay. Let them join the police and like, let them go through a re- What is the difference in training? Like what, what literally does a high school diploma give you? If you can pass an entrance exam to a thing, like what, other than an ability to discriminate, like I know so many people that graduated from high school, I wouldn't trust them to wipe their own ass more than, like like successfully without their fucking fingers going through the paper. You know what I mean? In their in their thirties, like the worst people I knew in high school all have diplomas. <laughs> Sociopaths have high school diplomas. Like it fucking proves nothing. It's just a high school diploma. <laughs> Whatever. Brett couldn't stop sweating. Uh, Prescott fucking blackmails Brett at some point during this about his wife or some shit. And then his wife shows up in New York anyway. Um, Hassan is still alive at this point. Let's see. We'll go back down. During this also, we, we run into people that are like criminals or something. And... Uh, Brett goes missing. Okay, yeah, this is where Brett says not to go to New York. Um, he also says that I think before, like she gets, he tells stories, like the story gets told out of order a lot, right? So it's extra confusing, even though it's already bad. Um, he tortures a guy in a basement named Mahmoud because, hey, we, we hit almost the whole thing, right? We got almost every single basic Arabic name. It, we, have, we have fucking like, 10 Arabs in this, okay? It's like 10 white guys, and it's Jim, Joe, Jack, John, Jerry, and Tom. (laughs) I saw a white guy named John. (laughs) Praise be to God, he said to his friend Joe, who was walking up beside him, holding a typical American gun and dressed in blue jeans and a plaid red shirt. A third of them, wearing a large, conspicuous gold cross on his chest, arrived, and they said, Hey, what's up, Bill? (laughs) It's a goddamn good day, Bill said to Joe and John. (laughs) You fucking... Uh, fuck it. Mohammed, uh, Mahmoud, Hassan... (laughs) Ahmed. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like, I do the same thing when I'm just trying to like reach for a name out of a hat. You know, it's always easy to go to the most basic name that you know. You know, fucking like just saying like Pedro. If you're talking about somebody from Mexico, it's like okay, it's fucking Mexican version of Peter. You know, it pops in your mind. But if I went to write like a whole story, you know, I, I like I would try to make a character. But I, I talked about this before. Like Shapiro is a sociopath when it comes to writing human characters, they literally serve a purpose and then are fucking executed or vanished or gone. Like he cannot even keep them in the story. The second their purpose is served, they have to die. They have to die or like vanish forever. 
You know what I mean? Or they can't be on because he can't. He just can't permit that many people to be on. And but their their introductions and stuff, and the, while they're there, pointless. Like, they're not human. It's like it's not a dude named Mahmoud. Like Shapiro doesn't know what that guy had for breakfast. Like if you ask him, like, what do you think Mahmoud had for breakfast? That when you were writing that scene, just as a, like as an exercise. Um, I don't know something some typical Muslim cuisine, <laughs> probably a falafel. You know, like, does he have a favorite coffee shop? Would he, like, like coffee, you know? Or is he, like, that hardcore? What color is his prayer rug? Uh, is he married? When did he meet his wife? I know he's a terrorist, but, like, what, what about that? Like, any of those, like, deeper details. It goes into, like, whenever you see, like, a bad action movie, you can always tell it's particularly bad when people get killed, like, way too easy. Not like it was too simple to see them go. It's just, like, you're not really killing a person. You're just kind of, you know tying a knot at the end of a of a of a long stitch pattern you just you just finish and then they're done oh a brick hit him he fell she cried over him and then that was it you know it's never like a, a real battle you know like a long extended thing it's really difficult to kill other people because other people are you in real life it's just you it's another you thoughts dreams hopes a past the future memories of their 15th birthday you know, uh, the favorite smells, foods that they're like really wanting to try again, like a week from now, you know, like people, people will fight for their lives like crazy and they have lives to live if they win. But like, I just don't get that vibe from a Shapiro thing. You know, it, 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 the, the spend, the expendability of the human animal is just so fucking on point for the entirety of this, that it's, it's, it's beyond the pale. There you go. Brent had been missing for more than 24 hours. So Brett goes out of pocket for a while. People are trying to find him because like the president's still like on this thing. Prescott's still on this thing. That he's going to announce his like his uh, fucking like work program. He's doing, he's just doing like fucking uh, Franklin, like an FDR works program for Americans to get people like the economy going, which would work by the way, but he's just not going to do it. Um, these are people whose names I don't know. Blatch. He's going to die like 10 seconds from now. Blatch. Oh, this is Blatch is a guy that works at a newspaper. Yeah. He's just like a, like a ratty, like new New York fucking news guy. Department of Washington Heights. Fucking Ellen doing shit. Oh, this is Ellen following in the, the path of Brett trying to figure out what he was up to, which could be like its own individual story because like a bunch of stuff happens she goes like a bunch of places like every paragraph is her doing a different thing but none of them move the plot forward or teach you about her she just literally is describing like a laundry list of shit she does she finds hassan dead in a fucking bathtub because muslim all right he's not gonna make it to the end my man um he's a good one and they're done with him so like the last thing that you can get out of him the last bit of blood you can squeeze out of his corpse is just a little tragic death oh no Killed by his own people. They are like barbarians living in their own filth. <laughs> Have you seen your husband yet, Mrs. Hawthorne? That little repost. <laughs> okay, so she runs into the president. She meets up with him. Fucking, let's get through it. Let's get through it. Just such a long back and forth between all these guys. And it's so trash. Here we go. Why, why are you doing this? Because Mrs. Hawthorne, oh yeah, said Prescott, your husband forced me into this. So did you. The president of the United States is not just a job, it's a high office. The president of the United States cannot look ridiculous. He can't have two-bit jackass redneck governors spitting in his eye. And he can't have rogue generals portraying him as a, weak, as a weakling days after terrorists blow up the goddamn George Washington Bridge. This is another irritating thing because he does the same thing with Prescott that he does with Brett. Prescott is the president of the United States of America. This is like a house of cards, like the president pushing a lady onto the fucking train tracks, the vice president, whatever kind of thing. Like the president in real life does not have to leave the White House to have somebody threatened or killed. He's the president of the United. He has guys for that. Um, even if it's a, like a, a weak willed fellow like Prescott, like you should have him utilizing like the FBI or like, you know, the FBI, the CIA, um, and bringing people down, have him have his chief of staff do chief of staff stuff. But instead the president himself is going to places to talk with a fucking psycho 
rogue actor general who's just in New York City fucking around doing stuff, and the general's wife who was inexplicably the second most important person in Texas all of a sudden. Uh, he threatens them. They're like, no, whatever. Fuck, it doesn't matter. Uh, Mark Prescott. Uh, this is all full of... This is all... This entire chunk towards the end is just Ben Shapiro uh, jerking off, basically. The president wants to do a work program. He needs more money. He's going to beg the Chinese. It's, a, it's this series of political whatever the fucks again and again and again. If you're into his politics, this is fucking awesome. Uh, because this is just like you're right, hell yeah, buddy. I don't, I'm not even like I'm not even gonna give that kind, that kind of person would want read this shit. That's right, of course. Additional additional debt from the Chinese, I bet. It, back and forth. There's discussions of trying to look good and make up on TV. So many conversations about fucking like preparing for this or that press venue. It's just somebody who has a certain job being overly important and overly cute about every fucking aspect of it, and it's just fucking miserable. Um, do, 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 do. Let's get down a little bit further. Okay, so we have Prescott's big speech. Okay, during Prescott's speech, all of this we scroll down this much. Okay, I'm just gonna keep this is this is how much speech we have till we finally get down to the bottom. Uh. Just a little bit above it. Ellen, oh, or or for some reason, Soledad, whatever her name is, builds a plastic gun. She goes to shoot the president. The president does a whole fucking like Ayn, R Ayn Rand level fucking liberal speech. It's trash. Talks about stuff. Jerks himself off. It's miserable. She goes up to shoot him. Uh, for some reason, Brett says, wow, I see a girl with a, her hand in her purse. Clearly, it's a gun. He goes and screams gun, tries to tackle her. She shoots a gun into the air. He gets it from her, the plastic gun, gets tackled by the Secret Service, realizes one of the Secret Service guys has a conspicuous scar that's on his face that is the same scar as one of the fucking um, Muslim dude fucking terrorist guys that helped the other dude earlier. But that dude takes him out and knocks him out or something, and they put him in his cell. The president and all the Secret Service guys go get on the plane. Ellen gets dragged onto the plane with them, onto Air Force One. Like and like subscribe. And subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.